All right, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, today, our lovely typical host, Miss Krishna Priya, is not available. She's off and jaunting around in the Himalayas. <laughs> and uh, uh, anyways, <laughs> I am Wendy Napolitano, and I seem to be getting some feedback here. Not sure how to turn that off. <laughs> Can't hear you, Susan. We're not hearing any feedback on our end, or at least I'm not. No, I'm not either. Okay, I guess it's on my own. I'll just ignore myself. <laughs> if you can turn one device away from the other, it might fix that. Sometimes it's two devices being in proximity. Yeah, I'm, I don't have any other devices on. It's my own computer, but hang on. Maybe there's something in the background. I know what it is. Yes, yes, yes. Um, hang on one second. I'm so sorry, you guys. <laughs> this is my first time hosting, obviously. There we go. All right, start over. <laughs> Okay, I'm not getting feedback now from my other login. So <laughs> thank you guys for your patience. And um, nonetheless, I'm Wendy Napolitano and I have here with me today, uh, Peter Dennis. And I'm very excited to have him here. Thank you to everybody who's watching live on YouTube. Thank you to everybody who's here in the room and um, and has joined us. So Peter, I, I um, am super excited to be able to host you since I've worked with you before. On, on channeling and and uh, would like to find out some information on your background and um, how you got involved in this. And so if you could just kind of give us some of your um, your background information and, um, and then if there's any questions that come up, you know, if you can just put them in the chat or the YouTube chat, anywhere along the line, and we'll be looking for that information and uh, address them as they go. And then I'll turn it to speaker view in here just in a moment. Okay, you want the executive summary, I guess. Uh, <laughs> the executive like, summary for a sure. Long life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, my career was basically in business. Uh, I was a human resources professional for probably about 40 years. Uh, retired when I didn't have to earn a living anymore. Uh, that was about 15 years ago, and I became a hypnotherapist and did that for a while in sort of a conventional way, you know, smoking cessation, weight loss, that kind of thing. And uh, the practice began to move in the direction of spirituality. People wanted to know about soul purpose, past lives, that kind of thing. And uh, I found uh, three of my clients reporting past lives on other planets. And uh, I was blown away by that. I didn't realize that that could even happen. And uh, so I wanted to investigate it more. And I rounded up a few of my uh, former clients, those that I thought wouldn't be too spooked out if they found they were on another planet. Yeah. <laughs> and That's uh, always exciting. <laughs> Six of them uh, came forward and five of them all ended up channeling. So that was in July of 2018. And since then, um, I've been working with people who want to become channelers or with channelers who would like to be more in the public or maybe meet other channelers. And I also, I think, have the kind of mission of disseminating information and helping people with their spiritual growth. So um, I guess that brings us to the present time. I, there, I've now worked with 82 individuals, all of whom are channeling. Wow. Yeah, that's... that blows me away. Yeah, well, especially, you know, the thing I think that's interesting is you'll hear, you know, even myself, I've said this too, that everybody has the ability to channel. It's just a matter of like learning to tap into yourself and to connect with yourself. And with meditation, I feel like meditation has, you know, moved a lot of people in that direction, but mm -hmm. they're not quite moving to the next step. Um, and, and one of the things I noticed, you know, when I was reading the book and, um, oh, quick look at this. <laughs> there it 
Cheers. <laughs> Thank you, Wendy. Official and in print, the channeling connection, the process, the beans, and the messages. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, um, but when I was reading through it, I feel like a lot of the um, a lot of the individuals that were doing channeling and that were included in the book, those that you selected out of you know all of the people that you've worked with, um, there tends to be that that similar message. Mm -hmm. One question that I have for you is: after you started working and finding that this information was coming up. What ended up being your motivation for actually beginning to write the book? Yeah. <laughs> Starting well, out with the hard ones. <laughs> I'm not a natural writer. Uh, you know, I've written, uh, it depends how you count them, but I think about seven books. And uh, at best, I, I would say I'm an author. You know, a writer gets up every day and writes, and uh, I don't, and I, I don't find it easy. But uh, Anyway, uh, what prompted me, I think, is that I was beginning to uh, assemble information that I thought was pretty fascinating. And I wanted to simply get it out to other people. I thought other people would enjoy it and learn from it. And perhaps um, it might contribute to their spiritual development. So uh, I think I was just motivated as a teacher uh, to you know, get the information out there. Yeah, wonderful. That sounds um, super cool. You're going to probably see me, you know, put my glasses on my readers. I'm going to have to put them on and off as we go. So <laughs> hopefully that won't be distracting. But um, as, as you've worked with all of the different channelers, even those that didn't make the book, what would you say is or are some of the messages that were coming through for you? Um, or that you were hearing again and again, or were they always different? Um, no, and um, as you know, I selected what I thought were maybe the top 10, and they make up the third part of the book. Uh, the first part being about channeling, and the second part being um, disclosure of what life is like as an Andromeda and a Palladian, that kind of thing. But the message is... Um, uh, number one message was self-love. And that came through from Jesus, came through from, I think, the divine realm, and a number of others. Um, the second one was that we're all one. And uh, I picked eight others and thought, in my mind, they were maybe the top 10 of all the ones I heard. Now, throughout the book, there are a number of other messages. Some of them just didn't make the cut for the top 10 as I saw them. Um, and I think, um, yes, a number of different beings would sometimes say the same message. And um, some of the messages, as I say, didn't make the cut and aren't really in that latter part of the book, but they may be in the part where I've asked a being or a collective if they have any messages for humanity at this time, and they might have delivered one that I thought, well, that's kind of neat, but it really is number 12. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so even though you just completed this book, have you already started the next book? <laughs> no, Wendy. <laughs> Uh, no. <laughs> I wrote a book once on spirituality, which uh, I thought was a pretty good book. And of course, as soon as you write a book like this, the minute it's published, it becomes a little bit obsolete and over time more and more because you are learning all the time. And you look back on that book and you say, gee, that, I was, that was pretty shallow thinking at the time. And uh, I was tempted to go back and rewrite the uh, book on spirituality. It's called Spirituality, Understanding It and Pursuing It. And um, then it occurred to me, no, that's where I was at that point. And maybe that's where the readers are too. Uh, and this book that has just come out is, is a more advanced version. So um, I don't plan to uh, write any, but it's funny, I was uh, working with a channel just this week 
And the being said to me something along the lines of, you're going to write another book. And I said, oh, but geez, no, you know. Well, I'm glad that I had the intuition to plug you first. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, they keep telling me that too. So I, I apparently there's some book in my background. And it's interesting because um, as I worked with you and ended up you know, being included in, in your book, and I'm very grateful and honored uh, to be able to be a part honestly. Um, but they told me that when I get ready to write a book, that it's going to be, you know, they won't tell me what, <laughs> still my decision. <laughs> it, it's like when you're ready. So apparently I've still got my time out, but were you getting that sensation as you were working? Like, did anybody tell you about the first book during the channeling that they're like, Oh, you need to take this information and start like documenting it. Uh, well, it's funny. Yeah. Um... I have a newsletter, as you may know, and um, I started to put some information in or write articles, actually, uh, kind of profiling uh, some of the beings that were channeled. So um, I think if you go back to about March is where it perhaps started, and uh, I may have started with the Palladians or something. And uh, after I did about three or four of them, it began to dawn on me that if I did 20 of them, I'd have the makings of a book. And uh, now I don't know whether that thought was an original thought or a prompted, uh, prompted. prompted thought. Uh, I'm beginning to suspect that we don't have too many original thoughts and that just about <laughs> everything we think comes from somewhere else. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, there was a point uh, back uh, in the spring, I guess, where I had a few of these articles and I thought, oh, I could weave them together and make a book and get this out to more people. Yeah, well, I, I do know that your focus on spirituality um, has been kind of a journey for you. How did you end up going into wanting to, you know, begin working in hypnosis at all? Like to, and I know that you say that you had clients who came to you like for help, but what was your original thought as to, I know one day I wanna grow up and be a hypnotist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, as I said earlier, I was a human resources professional, and um, I was a generalist, really. I, I was responsible for everything, labor relations, recruitment, compensation, all those things. But I used to really enjoy training. And um, one of the most popular uh, programs we had, and this is a 3D kind of thing, it was goal setting. And... Uh, now, these days, I'm learning to be a little more flexible about goals. But uh, back then, goal setting was a way of achieving what you wanted. And uh, it always occurred to me, if you could somehow unleash the unconscious mind towards goals, you're really mobilizing a, a stronger force. So I thought, well, the way you can do that is through hypnosis. And uh, because you're directly addressing people's unconscious mind and uh, so I, I when I retired I became a hypnotherapist that was 15 years ago and uh, yeah I guess um, you know one thing led to the other um, human training to uh, hypnotherapy to kind of the spiritual aspects of that to the channeling um, yeah, it wasn't planned particularly at all. It was where I was at the time. It just occurred to me an interesting new direction might be hypnotherapy or whatever. Right, right. Um, well, I know we have people who are watching on YouTube and would like to offer them the opportunity to, you know, send in their questions. Um, so... If, if anybody has any questions specifically for, for Peter regarding you know, hyp, hypnosis or his book, The Channeling Connection, um, please feel free to type that message in and um, we've got it being moderated to look for your questions and then we'll go ahead and read those. Um, so, and then if there's anybody in the room that has questions, be happy to address those at this time as well. Let me just take a quick gallery view here. Everybody's probably got their screen on um, <laughs> on off, you know, to not have to be to be seen. 
what type of services do you offer channelers? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm assuming that you mean somebody who's already channeling. Um, really just um, two things, I think. Uh, one, uh, perhaps a little more exposure to the public. Um, I can sometimes arrange events. I can get you on my website, which features probably a couple dozen channelers who elected to do that. Um, their photo is there, their contact information. Uh, in Wendy's case, I interviewed her. And uh, so we've got a video interview there and uh, some of Wendy's, um, uh, I guess, individual uh, videos. Um, the other thing I can do is introduce them to other channelers. I've got what I call the buddies list. And uh, these are channelers who like to practice with other channelers and maybe as equally important, like to speak with other channelers. You know, when you, you start into this channeling process, you have a lot of doubts. I think um, probably Susan and Wendy would agree that uh, initially you're not sure what's going on. Is it them? Is it me? And, uh, you know, I can say, look, this is normal. It'll uh, get better as you practice. Well, hearing it from me, a non-channeler, uh, goes only a certain distance. But if you start to hear that from other channelers and you hear from other channelers how they've learned to deal with it and what conclusions they've come to, um, it's just a lot more rich or it's richer than just hearing it from me. So um, I offer those things. I've done events with uh, channelers where I've moderated um, and they've uh, done their thing. I think that's pretty much it. I think in the course of conversation, I can certainly um, perhaps just give them information that I've gleaned from other channelers. And, um, you know, they, they do show up with a lot of questions about their <laughs> how they might apply it, their, their careers and such. Right, right. Um, that's, that's something that I that I noticed as well. Um, even just like looking through, you know, your, your YouTube site and, you know, the variety of different people that you've worked with. And, and I'm not the only one that you had interviews with. Obviously, you've got many people that are out there. And, and as far as your buddies list goes, I do agree because as you start to connect in with these other channelers, it gives you an opportunity to um, hone your skills and also mm -hmm. to have that conversation that you were saying about, oh, I, is it me that's coming through or is it someone else coming through? Because a, the majority, I would say, of us are actual, you know, conscious channelers versus trans channelers. Um, mm -hmm. Now, have you worked with anyone who, when they go into channeling, goes into trans channeling? So to just define that for, you know, kind of more for the public, the conscious channeling is your ego mind is still a part and is listening to the conversation. So sometimes it's like you hear yourself kind of asking your own questions and sometimes the doubt will be there. So you kind of have to say, okay, ego, go from here and go over there and like, don't bother me right now, I'm channeling. And that's from channeler's point of view. But also as far as the trans channelers, they just go out like Jim, like, you know, Jim Jim Charles, when, he, when he's on channeling, he doesn't remember any of it. He has to go back and watch it so that he can have a recollection of what's happening. But what has been your experience with um, with those people that you've worked with? And are any of the trans channelers in your book? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, there's others that uh, are well known as well. Uh, Daryl Anka, who channels Bashar, first words out of his mouth after a session is, how did it go? I yeah. didn't have a, a clue. Uh, Ann Morris is the first channeler I ever encountered personally. Uh, she channels a group called the Trans Seekers, and she's been doing it for about 30 years. And I asked her, uh, where do you go when this is happening? And she said, I don't know. She says, uh, I've heard it all before. You know, the questions are mostly about career, relationships, health. Uh, there's a limited number. And she says, uh, I just get bored and leave. And uh, she doesn't know <laughs> what's happening either. Uh, of the ones I've worked with, um, I would say it's more like a range. At one end, somebody is fully aware of everything that transpires. And at the other end of that spectrum, they have no clue at all of what's happened. And there are people in between who say, uh, yeah, I got snatches of it. I had the, sort of the, the general themes of some of the questions, uh, but I don't recall all the details. So it's uh, really, I would say, a sliding scale or a spectrum. 
Uh, but yes, I've had people at uh, the, the end that you would call uh, trans channelers. Ah, it's really cool. Um, I do have a question from, from YouTube. Matt Wally asks, what would be the signs of someone who may be called to channel? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, somebody says, this is going to be really cool. I think I can make a pot full of money here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's the sign that they probably should not be doing this. I think right? mostly. I, I, I agree. That service point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, when I do meet new people, I uh, I guess I've certainly experienced people who are uh, in it for various reasons and motives. But uh, I think the people who are most uh, able and ready. Um, have been on a spiritual path uh, for some time and are fully aware of it. Uh, they meditate regularly. They um, may get promptings that they're aware of. Uh, some of them get visions. Some of them are quite psychic. Um, generally, <laughs> very nice, grateful, kind people. Uh, sensitive, you might say. Um, I haven't really nailed down a lot of criteria, but something goes off in my head that says, yeah, I think this one, you know, and uh, no, this one's just not in it for the right reasons. Um, but I think that spiritual life, that, um, you know, regular meditating and um, being aware of, you know, nature and things like that. Yeah. You know, that's interesting that you brought up nature. I feel like there's a lot of channelers, myself included, who talk about needing to ground. Mm. And the primary objective for grounding is connecting into earth and going outside. Are there times that you find yourself outside and kind of getting those intuitive pings, just like, you know, a day at the park or, you know, out at the beach? <laughs> climbing mm. the mountains i don't know are you a mountain climber <laughs> uh not at the minute no i guess I don't have but uh, <laughs> uh my, my wife and i are nordic pole walking instructors so uh, we like to get out with our poles and walk and uh we're fortunate uh, that we belong to a group of uh, hikers uh that every wednesday we go out to places that generally have a lot of trees we're hiking through a forest and uh, we happen to live near um, an area where we can go out the door and in 10 minutes we're among the trees. So I like the trees. Uh, <laughs> and they Karen, like you. <laughs> well, Karen Ashby uh, actually channeled uh, the tree consciousness for me one time. And uh, yeah, I had a nice conversation with them. Uh, they're amazing. Uh, they do so much more than we <clears throat> realize. Anyway, uh, yeah, I get, I think, these little intuitive nudges and such um, more when I'm out there uh, just walking around the, the trees and observing wildlife, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's good for the soul, right? So, um, so tying that back into the channelers and, you know, those that you've worked with, have there been any beings that came through that you went, oh, wow, like that really impacted me or... I hadn't thought about that from that point of view before that really like made a difference in my life individually. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> my learning curve is like that. <laughs> you know, I'm continuing to learn. And of course, when you're dealing with ascended masters, you know, you're having a conversation with Mary Magdalene or Mother Mary or St. Germain or Jesus. I mean, how can you not be excited? Yes. Uh, learning um yeah and they frequently present things in new ways new new ways of looking at some of the things that you've looked at before but it just enriches your understanding of things so um yes i you know all the time is kind of a short answer but um yeah um and I would say, Wendy, if that ever stopped, uh, I'd do something <laughs> else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's definitely something that has to do with like your next highest level of excitement. 
And, um, and right now you're, you're promoting your book, The Channeling Connection, and it talks about the process, the beans, and the messages. So there's, you know, it's divided up into the three sections. Mm-hmm. And I feel like the question that was asked about how do you know if you're called to channeling, there were highlights, I think, from the process that maybe you thought were similar as you were having these conversations? Um, well, yes. Um, the, by the process, I mean the uh, method that I use to help an individual begin to channel. So I use hypnosis uh, to get them relaxed. Now, you can use a guided meditation. And to be honest, I think meditation and hypnosis are identical. Um, You know, brain waves change to alpha, metabolism drops, um, you know, the breath gets shallow, you begin to see things, um, certain chemicals flow that are similar. Uh, The main difference is with hypnosis, there's a guy like me running the agenda. uh, (laughs) We're in uh, meditation. I I think actually you could call meditation self-hypnosis. Right. You know what? I, I think I think that's a good point, because um, my train of thought is when you're listening to a meditation, it tends to be one goal oriented. So whether you're listening to, you know, like just sound waves where it's a particular hertz or if you're focused in on, you know, uh, connecting into the heart, a meditation to connect into the heart mm-hmm. or, you know, a meditation to, you know, read your Akashic records, you know where it's more like focused. I think the main difference, obviously, working with a a hypnotist is that you can veer off on other directions. You don't have to stay, you know, go up here and then stay at this plane. You can modulate, is that the right word? Hopping, you know, hopping around left and right, go on a tangent, shoot, Mm -hmm. shoot, shoot. (laughs) Go deeper, yeah. Um, Yes, that's right. And, um, I guess to go back to your original question, um, to begin the process, whether it's a guided meditation or hypnosis, uh, the individual uh, wants to relax or should relax. Um, At that point, when they're quite deeply relaxed, and I run a little test uh, just to see how relaxed they are, and that's a hypnosis kind of thing. Um, But if you're not a hypnotist, uh, you can still do it by just guiding a meditation. Um, But when they're ready or seem to be ready, um, we ask and the individual or the client, you might say, I I prompt them to issue an invitation. Uh, Ask for a being of the light who would like to channel through you to come through and speak to me. Um, that being should probably be of the fifth dimension of consciousness or higher, but not too much higher because, you know, the beings are vibrating at a certain level, the humans at a lower level, and they have to come together. And even when they do, there's some aligning that has to be done. So you don't want them jumping to ascended masters right away uh, or archangels, Um but some can, uh, but ideally, um, fifth dimension of consciousness or a little higher, but um, certainly no lower. Uh, we ask that um, ideally the being have uh, had some experience channeling through a human before, that they have some understanding of the human brain and the English language, not necessary, but uh, helpful. We ask the ego to step aside, be the observer, ensure that everybody's safe, but just play the role of observer. And then we ask Archangel Michael to stand by and just ensure that only beings of the light need apply. Then we yeah, that's really that's really a great point. Um, the you know that Archangel Michael is kind of there standing by because. It's not often, but, you know, there's definitely the spirits that, um, you know, they don't all necessarily have, you know, the highest and brightest of intentions toward Mm -hmm. human beings. Why is that? I don't know. I, you know, I I can't tell you, but 
I would say that, you know, at least 90%, this is a number I'm picked, I'm just picking out of my head, <laughs> are, you know, on the wanting to help humanity side. They're wanting us to, you know, go into what we are calling, you know, the ascension. Mm -hmm. But what is the ascension really, but your own step upward toward your personal growth, whether you're on this side in a physical body or in a etheric body on the other side of, you know, the beings that are helping us. And who's not to say that the beings on the other side don't also have physical bodies in their realm and mm -hmm. that they're channeling us while we're channeling them. <laughs> <laughs> um, nothing's impossible, Wendy. <laughs> 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 yeah, I have never <clears throat> had a single instance of any malevolent or dark being come through that I'm aware of. I had a couple one time <clears throat> of beings who came in out of curiosity and kind of looked around and they started to talk and um, I, I asked, what are you doing? Are you here to help? And they said, no. And um, I said, why are you here? And said, well, we're just curious. And I said, would you leave, please? And they did. And I yeah. talked to Michael, or Archangel Michael afterwards. Um, someone else channeled him for me. And I said, what was going on there? And he said, well, these were like juveniles. They uh, should have known better, but they were in the area and they saw the opening and they just popped in to check it out. So we booted them out pretty quickly and... Um, you know, no harm done, but uh, so that's the closest I've ever come to anything yeah. dark, and th that was not dark at all. Uh, right, these kids. <laughs> right, and for me, my experience as a channeler has been trickster energy coming in, oh, yeah. and that was a being pretending to be somebody else, and that's happened to me twice. And the first time it was when I was assisting somebody during a regression and I recognized it right away I'm like you are not who you're saying you are just like how you said you know they just were kind of like no I'm not here to help I'm just kind of popping in and and I'm like you're you're actually like 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 have a mask on and pretending to be somebody else and you're not because what happened is the person that they were working with they were channeling you know during a, re a regression session and while they were in that state this other being just decided to like pop in, but I saw it physically kind of happen with my eyes. Have you ever had that happen to you where while you're working with them and like, cause you're watching them, have you ever seen like the movement of the energy physically, like with your eyes? Has that ever happened? Not the energy uh, itself. I have certainly seen the human moving around a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, partly that is, um, an alignment you know as i said uh, the the energies have to come together but still even though they're together there's still some fine tuning that has yeah. to be done and uh as near as i can tell uh some movements I, i've had this kind of thing back and forth and i've had some sort of almost rotation. oh yeah that's and uh that calms down after a few sessions but um yeah apparently it's just part of the alignment and some people right know. right i know that i've experienced that um you know kind of where you're like you feel like you're sitting still sometimes you can see that you're sitting still because you'll be like for me doing light language um but you feel like you're moving like this even though you're not mm -hmm. and then i i get the sense of when i'm channeling that there there definitely is you know that movement happening i've seen it back and forth i've you know had my arms moving around <laughs> <laughs> it's you know it's 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 all just a part um now within the book you have many different beings that have come through angels and archangels syrians source soldier um the divine realm the guardians of light mm -hmm. and the thing that struck me and i i stated this um as part of your you know recommendation to read this this book is that the works really remind me of Dolores Cannon and her style mm. and what struck me was with Dolores Cannon she does a lot of the and people are interested in this I myself I'm interested in it I like to read um but she goes back with I asked this they said that mm -hmm. I asked this they said that so her books tend to be like 
five hundred something pages. <laughs> yeah. yeah um, she scripts it. Right. She's yeah. She's really just going through the script of it. Mm-hmm. But what I really really enjoyed about your book is that it's it's palpable. It's an easy read. It's digestible. You can get the information. It makes sense. It's clean. It's clear. And you get to the point. <laughs> here is what here is what the bean was saying. Here's what the message is. There it is. And and there's several of them. And I have to say, it's um, it's informative. It, it makes you want to go back and go, oh yeah, like what were they saying again? And let me let me just look, you know, look up one part. Well, and from the divine been... realm, I'm just going to take one sentence. It says. We are all parts that together make up God. Mm. And that really resonates with me, especially when a lot of times, you know, what we're saying, either during channeling or during our spiritual groups, is we've all got that spark of God within us. And if we've got the spark of God within us, then that means each of you, (laughs) everybody Mm. watching, um, has that ability to connect. Yeah. And it's just a matter of choice. The divine realm gave me the analogy of an ocean. And they said, imagine an ocean and all around it are empty vessels. It could be a milk bottle, a beer can, an oil drum, but all around it, an infinite number of them, every one different. And then each of these vessels fills up with the water from the ocean. And it then goes its separate way. A milk bottle gets in the fridge, I guess. A <laughs> gets in a garage or whatever. Um, they, over time, will break down. And that water will flow back somehow into the ocean. And the ocean is richer for the experience that each of those vessels have had. So they said, God is the ocean. God is in every one of those vessels. And you and I are some of those vessels, or our bodies are. I might be a wine bottle. (laughs) (laughs) Red wine. (laughs) Yeah. But they gave me that. And, uh, you know, that's an example, I think, of, um, yeah, I I knew we were all one. But that's kind of a neat way of looking at it. And uh, yeah, we're all part of the ocean. We've all got yeah. the ocean in us. And, right, and the water, water is within us, and it's definitely not just like tap water. <laughs> yeah, and we, you uh, know, we each are unique. We each go out and have our own experience, and ultimately, it all finds its way back to the source anyway. Right, the right. Is richer for it. Well, let me let me reach out again and see if anybody has questions, asking them to go ahead and submit them at this time. And if I have anybody in the room that wants to ask a question, I'm happy to bring you back. We can go on gallery for a moment and I don't want to hog, hog all the conversation. <laughs> uh, let's see. No, I think uh, the chat is, we've addressed all the chat ones. Is Joan in? Joan is in, and here's Susan. Let's see. Susan's probably got a good question. Just rolling around in the back of her mind. (laughs) Yeah, I I posted Q in the chat for a question. But um, so since 2019, I've taken four channeling classes, and one of them being from Jim Charles as part of this group. And and I know as part of Jim's uh, class, we talked about there's being like four portals in the brain that can be um, can be open or closed, so to speak. And even if you just have one open, you know, it's a way for beings to connect. But you can also have um, portals like within your auric field or you know your energy field. And um, and I'm just wondering if if you've uh, heard anything about that, like with other channelers, and also like as a conscious channel myself i it's like they the being will overlay their energy with mine i mean in in my head i set up you know protections or clear you know asked to be have my space cleared and things like that and and i'll see in my mind's eye like what the being look looks like sometimes and and speak their light language and all that um and 
but I know that's different from trans channelers and how they completely step out as opposed to merging energy kind of with the being and being like a stream of consciousness. And I step my ego aside to like be an observer, you know, of what's happening. And um, so, yeah, I don't know if you can talk about kind of your experience with uh, the differences between like uh, conscious channeling versus trans channeling or having like different portals in the brain or body and how beings connect. And I, I do like when I connect with a new being, yeah, I, there is a period of adjustment of aligning and our energies. And sometimes it's through yawning or <laughs> other body movements or things like you mentioned. Um, and uh, yeah, speaking light language and things as, as a way to uh, connect with them, you know, until after that first time, then, you know, it's easier, <laughs> but, but, um, but yeah, at first, the first time channeling you being usually there's kind of that adjustment of energies. So any of those topics, <laughs> I'm throwing a lot at you, but. Okay. Well, portals. Um, I'm not really aware of portals exactly. Um, however, I think there's a range of how beings line up with humans. Uh, some do it very seamlessly and uh, all on an energetic basis. Some seem to do it almost physically. Uh, for example, um, somebody was channeling a mantis being. Now, they are quite large and, um, you know, like 8, 10 feet uh, in height. And um, I was uh, saying, uh, and I often ask at the outset, uh, do you need a moment just to work on the alignment? because that is best done on the other side. And uh, the being said, yeah, give me a couple of minutes here. And uh, it seemed to be taking a while. And I, I said, um, you know, do you still need more time? Or what's going on? And he asked, what's the problem? And he said, uh, well, the, the problem is she's got two legs and I have six. <laughs> We've got to line them up. <laughs> now, that tells me uh, that somehow... You know, he's almost physically getting his body into Energy. her body. Um, now, that's pretty rare in my experience. Um, usually, it's just an energetic uh, vibrational lineup. And um, I'm not aware of portals. It's uh, probably if you break it down scientifically or something, you might indeed find them. And, you know, I, I have no reason to dispute that. I just wasn't aware of it. Uh, trance versus tra um, conscious channeling. Um, what was the question there? Oh, just um, with other channelers that you've worked with. Um, and, how, you know, if you've worked mainly with trance channelers versus conscious channels, where it's kind of like you're still, it's almost like I'm in a meditative state, like, sitting in the next room where I can kind of listen what's going on, but I'm kind of partially stepped out, yeah. you know, cause I'm, I'm so relaxed, I guess. And just letting the being speak through me like a stream of consciousness is what it feels like. Yeah. And different than like, I know when Jim channels as a trans channeler, he'll be like off on a mountainside somewhere in its consciousness <laughs> and he'll come back after it's done and have no recollection of what, what happened, you know? And, um, and I know when Jim has taught his channeling classes, he'll actually channel beans and the beans will teach the class. So mm -hmm. it's not him teaching the class from his own right. consciousness. It's like, he's channeling other beings. Um, I think Gurnani from, I want to say Sirius B was one, a female. Um, yeah. So, so it's interesting. It's like, you're hearing the perspective of these galactic beings that are actually teaching the channeling class. So it's kind of a little bit different in that sure. way. Yeah. And uh, they'll give a bit of a lecture to an audience. They will dictate a book, um, yep. all those things. Uh, what you described for yourself, Susan, I think is um, kind of where most channelers are sort of midway between zoning out completely and being fully aware of everything. Yeah. You know, you're, you're I agree. kind of a fuzzy, yeah. film, uh, you know, but I think that's where most are. And then there are the, the, the extremes, but uh, yeah. Well, I, I've, I've heard that too, that, I mean, you have to have a lot of trust to like completely let go and 
<laughs> completely yeah. step out, well, you know. Well, you know, it's funny because Jim is always talking about um, when he's channeling, you know, that like his like his physical demeanor will change, his voice mm-hmm. will change. Mm-hmm. And also, um, you know, there's there's times where um, where when he's channeling, he's like, uh, OK, I got to get the tail out of the way. <laughs> you know, yeah, there's, so there's one. Yeah. Reptilian being or Grindel, Elia Sean Dizendi, I believe. Um, yeah. That he used to yeah have to adjust to the t- <laughs> to the tail. Be, like, um, around and, yeah. I think it's gotten easier goes. maybe for him over the years or it's not so much anymore, but. But yeah, yeah. and like I know I know my experience recently was you know channeling a rainbow channel a rainbow dragon, and during that I I couldn't get enough air for this dragon, and I felt like I was like this big being, and I kept like getting these big yawns, and and there definitely is that time, and I'm sure you've experienced it when you're working with your channelers or the people that are being assisted to become channelers that there's during that merging that there's there's that figuring out of the energy. I know I felt it when Mm -hmm. it happens and I'm sure that you've had, you know, the people that you've worked with say the same thing that, you know, they, they, they are feeling that energy or, you know, the conversations afterwards about, Oh, what was their experience? Like when they come out or have you ever had anybody who comes out and it was like, I don't know what happened. Like you have to tell me. (laughs) No, (laughs) Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, They all have a, a fair idea. They just may not be aware of all the detail. Um, and I think as they get more into it, uh, and Susan put it well, I think, when she said it's a, a function of trust. Yeah. And, and then Morris's case, it might be that, but it uh, might also be boredom. I <laughs> think just, uh, you know, she used to, uh, I think it was once a week, she would have a large group come to downtown Toronto. This was back in the 80s. And um, she would have 100 people in a room and they'd just line up at a microphone and one after the other would ask a question. And really the questions were not very varied. You know, they were- Oh, really- a lot of the same. Yeah, I'm not, probably a lot of, do you have a message for me? I get that, I get that asked a lot, just kind of a random. And I ask myself a lot, if I'm like working with new channelers, I'll be like, Oh, do you have a message for me? Like, like they're just randomly hanging out in the universe waiting to just deliver me a message, you know? <laughs> well, sometimes you can refine that a bit and say, is there something I need to know right now that would be very helpful? Right? Yeah. Well, I'll write that one down. <laughs> now, there is another um, question that has come up in the YouTube group. And um, Susan, I know you're moderating that. So if you wouldn't mind addressing yeah i'm gonna ask it's a little bit of a longer one so um yeah so mary in youtube asks that um she's lately um been aware of portals especially when she's falling asleep and that as part of that experience she's been having the sensation of hot air moving around her Mm -hmm. and um she's just wondering if if you know anything about that feeling of hot air or you know kind of those physical sensations um, when connecting through channeling or it dream, maybe even dream hypnosis when people are going under if they feel hot or cold or you know those type of sensations. Well, it's hard to say exactly what's going on, but to me, usually something like that is actually a being kind of knocking on the door a little bit, just maybe testing the waters you know, uh, are you here or can you perceive me? Uh, it's um, sometimes a sign that channeling may be down the road. Um, yeah, I know that both Wendy and I have had the experience of like having hot flash <laughs> or what it seems <laughs> like that, like either dream channeling or before channeling when, you know, like Wendy senses her beans around her. I know I think she'll you know, feel that heat. And sometimes I'll feel it at the same time because we're connected often when we're practicing <laughs> channeling together and then, or coming out of a channeling and it'll be like, yeah, like a release of energy that'll feel hot, yeah, you know, hot coming out of channeling. Yeah. Yeah. Hot and cold uh, is off, often accompanies channeling. Right. Uh, prior you know, to channeling that 
is maybe just uh, maybe an indication that channeling could be in the works. But. Right. The other thing too that I've experienced, and it seems to me that a lot of times cold energy is just that galactic energy, just the like you feel the presence. And if you, you know, if you look at some of these, uh, you know, some of the movies where it's like, oh, it's cold in here. And then it's like, oh, it's a spirit. Um, I, I really believe that there is, you know, a, a reality to that, to that aspect of it. Um, and, and from what I've noticed, and sometimes we'll say, hey, what is this, you know, I'm feeling warmth, you know, all of a sudden my head is hot, or I feel it in my torso, or I feel the vibration in my legs, and you'll ask, you know, what is that energy? And then the information that a lot of times comes is that that's where they're connecting with you. So you're, you are feeling their energy around you. And, um, and when it's a warmth, like you feel it inside your skin, not outside your skin. A lot of times the inside of your skin is they're actually doing healing work inside your body. And so that's uh, usually energetic work. And sometimes it's, you know, past life, not just this time. And, and then burning, I've also had people say, oh, my spine is burning, you know, like, I feel like it's a burn, like, ow, like it burns really physically, like I'm feeling it like a burning. And for me, that's usually um, uh, energy that's being burned off, like they're like, just like how fire is being used to like cleanse. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's over, you know, the few years that I've been doing this work. <laughs> that's what I've had, you know, that comes up because if I recognize, you know, and I don't know, maybe you've experienced this too. Uh, during your hypnosis sessions, when somebody is saying, oh, this feels really hot, you know, have you gone to the point where you go, oh, well, what, you know, what does this heat symbolize or what does this refer to? Uh, certainly they do report feeling hot and sometimes feeling cold. Usually we haven't really explored it. it it's usually, uh, kind of a byproduct. That's your next uh, book. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, no, it just seems to be a byproduct that uh, they finish channeling and they uh, say, how do you feel? And they say, oh, I feel really cold or I feel really warm. Um, and I guess we just kind of let it go at that. Um, no, I think you're um, interpreting it more than I ever have, Wendy. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> You know, I just channel that information. It just comes right in and that off we go. <laughs> yeah. No, I never really assigned much meaning to it other than, yeah, that's your experience. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? To be honest with you, I think because I do feel energy so easily, um, you know, a lot of times I'm like hearing my messages, but also I will feel the energy before and I feel it physically in my body. Um, and I know people have experienced this. You could be sitting there and all of a sudden your heart's racing. You're not doing anything. You're not running. You're not walking fast. You're literally just sitting in a spot and you're like, okay, am I like, is my arm numb? Like, you know, you know, the whole, you know, am I having a heart attack? Because your heart is racing so fast that you, you know, you get concerned about it. Um, and, and that's okay. I mean, I, I think that if anybody is having, you know, physical symptoms that go on for an extended period and they have, you know, concerns, yeah, check in with your doctor. And if they don't find anything, okay, then that's a confirmation checkbox, you know, that's energy that I'm experiencing. And that's, you know, that's, that's what's happening with that. But, um, but you can also, you know, you can also experience, you know, uh, tingles, buzzes, zaps, you mm. get this like, you know, kind of like little bugs crawling around on your head. It feels like, I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> like, you're like, oh, there's, you know, once I had a little creature trying to get my attention and it was like pulling my hair and I was like it literally felt like a bee landed in my hair and I was like like what's that and I couldn't I didn't have a mirror or anything so I couldn't check and I was like what is that and so the other lady who was in the room with me she goes I go is there something in my hair and she's like nothing there and I'm like okay and then I sat and then I felt it again and I was like what's that I'm like I was like you know like it startled me so it, you know it could be just just enough of a light touch that um uh, mm -hmm. that, that you get the sensation and you're like, oh, like, you know, you could get startled a little bit, but they're not trying to scare you. They're just trying to get your attention. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And um, there are many channelers who uh, say, oh, I feel it on this side. Oh, that's so-and-so, you know, or the Arcturians are here. I can tell because, I don't know, my hands get heavy or, or something. You know, oh. there's a number of things like that, tinglings and uh, little shakes and pulsations. 
Um, I think um, the one asking the previous question oh, here, clarified see. in the chat something about the heat felt more like a presence lying on her. Yeah, um, I've experienced that too. Um, mm -hmm. uh, for me, I've, I've felt like the full body pressure where it's just like you feel like you're being pressed on, mm -hmm. uh, like somebody's laying on top of you. <clears throat> and at that time, I feel like if you were ever getting that sensation, this is my recommendation from my own experience, obviously. Um, is that there's there's that merger that's trying to happen. And because you haven't got given permission, there's a possibility that they're trying to connect to you and you haven't given permission and that awareness is there enough that maybe you're asleep or getting ready to go to sleep or you're consciously aware of it enough to be like, no, 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 like you don't have permission to like make this connection with me. But at the same time, they could be just being like, Hey, just want you to know I'm here. And like I said, warmth tends to be a healing presence. So I would say if you have an opportunity to just, you know, do some deep breathing and then, and then ask, you know, ask, you know, quietly in your own mind, you know, who's here or, you know, who's trying to connect with me? Um, you know, are you, and then if you're asking that question, you can say, you know, are you 5D or higher? And just hear if your mind says yes or no, or you get a response. I think that because when you start channeling that, you know, sometimes you're like, okay, I'm just like talking to myself, like I'm just making this stuff up, but sometimes that's not. And so if you're maybe hearing in your minds, in your, in your, I'll say mind's eye, but you could say who's here and you may hear a name, mm -hmm. you may hear a name. So I would say, if you do hear a name, trust it. And if you're saying, I, I don't want your presence here right now, like you don't have my permission, then send them off. Yeah. Just like, you know, just like when the beans came into, into Peter's session and they're, you know, they were juveniles and he was like, well, bye bye. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I agree with all of that, Wendy. And um but I think, uh, yes, it's um, certainly a presence, another being um, wanting to make contact. And it may not only be that you haven't given permission, but there could be some trauma or fear that's in your being yourself that is preventing you being open enough to accept. Um, you know, the question I often get is, can I channel? And um, the answer is usually yes. But the real question is, are you ready to channel? Are you ready? Will you allow it? Yeah. And yes. uh, can you? Yeah. If you've got a lot of trauma that is generating fear from a past life, ancestral memory, whatever, um, you may have to clear that before channeling mm -hmm. can happen. <laughs> but as Wendy says, uh, you know, if you don't like it, uh, just uh, ask it to leave and you probably will. Right. There's there's definitely that, you know, that law of free will that while we're here on the 3D plane, we have free will. And with that free will, you know, you can not only tell beings to leave you, but if you, you know, pitched up, picked up any hitchhikers, that's why I said pitched. <laughs> if you've picked up any hitchhikers, you know, it's, it's a good idea to cleanse and clear your, your arc field and your physical body. Um, I know a lot of us use the violet flame and I would, I would highly recommend it. And you've probably had that brought up in your book, right? Um, no, actually I didn't, but um, <laughs> it does. <come> up. <laughs> I uh, was, I know I was like, wait, didn't somebody talk uh, about it? But that could have been some of the Saint YouTube Germain, videos that I was watching. Yeah. St. Germain uh, seems to champion that violet flame. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can ask him to bring it around. Um, no, it uh, didn't get mentioned in the book, but uh, <laughs> uh oh, I called you out. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's the, the next book. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many options for you. <laughs> you but um, I, I do, I really do think it was mentioned um, because not only have I read your books, but I've also been, you know, going through your YouTube channel and watching some of the different things that you had posted out there. So it's entirely possible that, you know, one of the other channelers had, had mentioned it, um, or it's just knowledge in my head and I just picked it up and said it. <laughs> it's always yeah. a possibility. Yeah, either way, uh, it's very valid, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, clearing, clearing your field and connecting. And I feel like if, you know, if people are here 
at Hukalo watching these videos, they're already connecting in, right? They're already having these experiences, these metaphysical experiences, and either, you know, they've intuitively, you know, got information or they're noticing synchronicities um, or they're, you know, they're having those, those kinds of connections where it's making them want to find more information. Mm-hmm. So what I like is that you are giving more information. <laughs> Um, Thank you. I know, I know we're not at the end here, but um, how, how if anybody wants to reach out to you, have a hypnosis session, have a, a conversation, how would somebody get in touch with you? And how do you kind of start that process? Yeah, um, probably the best way is email. And um, depending which country you're in, you know, if you're if you live in Toronto or the area around uh, Richmond Hill where I live, uh, yeah, pick up the phone and give me a call. Or, but um, yeah, email is probably best. Just uh, shoot me an email. Um, I do suggest to most people uh, when they do make contact is go to my website. There you'll see more detail about what I do and uh, what my fees are. And um some reviews and testimonials from other people and then come back to me. And um, if you decide you'd like to go forward, then um, yeah, we can make a date usually on zoom. Um, the first 16 were all at my home. And after that COVID hit and the rest were all uh, zoom, except one a new one, a fella named Daniel and uh, Daniel's um uh, right now in Mexico, but he's uh, he lives in the same city I do. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, Zoom has taken me to uh, or brought me clients from Australia, Costa Rica, uh, throughout the U.S., across Canada, uh, France. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, Zoom has really opened things up a lot. Yeah. One of the blessings of COVID. Oh, somebody, somebody's asking if when I'm connecting with spirits, do I say, is somebody there? Um, I have said that if I feel that presence. So absolutely. I would, I would say if anybody has experienced that, um, sometimes I'll just get a sense. And this is my, you know, just my own experience of, oh, I'm feeling fairy energy around me. But also what I've noticed is certain energies have an effect on me. So empathic abilities. So I would say a lot of people who are channelers have with empathic abilities, mm-hmm. you know, they're feeling, sensing, hearing, seeing things and, um, you know, the clairs, right? So, and, and to bring this back is to bring this back to um, your contacting them. So your email and your contact information and all that is out at your website. It is. Um, uh, it's simply peter at peterhdennis.com. To and that's Dennis with two N's? Yep. <laughs> and the website is the same thing. It's uh, www.peterhdennis.com. Let's see. Um, yeah, so... I know that when I first reached out to work with you, I was like, oh, hey, like, I like the idea of being under hypnosis. It's very relaxing. Your brain goes somewhere and then you like have this conversation. So when I first reached out to you, I was like, okay, I'm a channeler, but I want to do hypnosis. (laughs) And then we just agreed to kind of, you know, go the other route. But, um, But I know that when you were talking about how your clients move around, I have gotten that sensation of handful of times where when I'm channeling like my hands will be out and open but it felt like like my hands were like being lifted up and pulled and that there would have been like large cables like Mm -hmm. if I could you know describe it somehow that they would be like large cables in the palm of my hand and like like my arms were being lifted up like to do the channeling this way and like you could it was very physical that I was like, I couldn't, like, it's like, I couldn't hold, close my hands. I couldn't bring my arms down. And then by the time, you know, when the channeling got done, it was like, <sighs> my arms are getting tired. Like, I can feel that my arms are getting tired by like holding them up, like supporting them, you know? 
but but I wasn't doing that. It was like an, an involuntary um, involuntary sensation that happened. And I know that Susan and I have also had this discussion that she's felt that too. So I was describing it to her and then I would talk about, oh yeah, I was getting the thing in my hands again, da, da, da. And so like over the conversations over, over time. And then one day she goes, you know, she was like channeling with her hands out like this. And she goes, oh, Wendy, I finally felt what you're talking about. <laughs> so, so there's definitely, you know, when you're channeling, there's, you know, these experiences um, that, that come up. Yes, um, I would say most people um, just, you know, sit in a chair and uh, they're comfortable and they don't move. Um, that would probably be more than half, maybe 60% or so. Um, the others, uh, yes, they do move around a little. They might twitch a little. Um, I would say a couple times I've seen people raise their hands, their arms. Um, more than that, I think I see them move their bodies around. Yeah. Um, Kate yeah, Woodley. that for sure happens. <laughs> yeah, Kate, Kate Woodley is um, a friend, and she wouldn't mind me saying this, but um, it took her about 42 minutes. I think we timed it before anything much happened, or a bean came through and spoke. And now, now she's a great channeler. But um, her body experience. was shaking. It, it, she was going through convulsions almost. And uh, yeah. I kept asking, are you okay, Kate? And she said, hey, I'm fine. And um, today she says, I still, and my left hand twitches a little bit when I channel. Yeah, um, I've, I've, I've had that experience during channeling where all of a sudden, like your hand will start shaking like this. And I'm like, okay, you know, like my mind is saying that, but at the same time, usually because I know that I've been told that I can channel with my eyes open, but mm -hmm. I think because of like the media being in front of you that I would find myself like looking at myself, you know? even though there's be other people on the screen, I, like I'm drawn to like, look at myself. So maybe mm -hmm. my own mirror reflection, I don't know, <laughs> but, but I keep my eyes closed because I get the sense that I would be too distracted. Um, and, you know, and I also think that, that some of that, you know, I, I always kind of joke around. I'm like, you know, I think I have undiagnosed ADD because it's like, Oh, squirrel. Um, but I also <laughs> think that people who have that kind of, that extra sensory of like, oh, something's going on over there. Something's going on over there. I think that we're multidimensional workers and we have that idea that there are other dimensions around us. And so it draws our attention because there's always stuff going around us that could be drawing your attention. And it's like, okay, what do I really need to pay attention to? And so, you know, there are those times where you're like, okay, I'm focusing in specifically on what I'm doing now, but um, have you, have you, noticed that at all or have you come across that yeah again it varies by individual um, I think one of the more dramatic ones was Gail Scott um, she was sitting with me in my basement and uh, in the rec room and uh, we were sitting side by side at a table we were going to do a video and um, I turned to her and said um, and she was channeling a group called Appetite and I said Appetite would Gail be able to open her eyes at this point and then she leaned right into me and said, like this? <laughs> Just <laughs> really open. And, uh, and I said, well, can she be mobile? Can she walk around? And she got up and danced around the room. And Gail's a fabulous dancer. So uh, it was oh, how fun. Small. But now, um, I, I, Gail and I did an event a few years ago. And um, she can moderate her own sessions. She can stand in front of a, a group and uh, she'll say, next question, oh, the man in the back in the red shirt, because she's got her eyes open and, and she can run the whole thing. And it's not Gail, it's Appetite. Yeah. Uh, so she that is. That sounds fun. <laughs> kind of to the extreme. But I usually ask most channelers um, at some point, maybe the fourth or fifth session, um, can, can you open your eyes? It is distracting. Um, but they seem for the most part to get over it and, um, not all of them, um, and not all of them want to, you know, Daryl Anka and, uh, many of the, the good ones don't open their eyes. Yeah. Daryl does. Um, yeah, I don't think he does either. Mm -mm. Yeah. That's, and that's been my experience. Never did. Um, 
But I, I would say the majority uh, with me certainly uh, have and can. Yeah. So you're yeah. an anomaly, Wendy. <laughs> oh, I was, I think I was like going, hmm, <laughs> just thinking a minute. <laughs> yeah. So um, I know you were telling me where your book is going to be available. Mm -hmm. Is it currently available or is that forthcoming? Yeah. No, it's on Amazon just about everywhere. But uh, it's funny working with Amazon. Um, I set it up uh, as Amazon.ca for Canada. And uh -huh. it automatically takes the price I set for Canada and translates it for every other country that it deals with. Now, somehow in Australia... Um, what is it, 1899 in Canada, that translates to something like 2173 in Australia. But Australia shows the price as $38 and change. And I've been on their case uh, saying, hey, nobody's going to buy this thing in Australia. <laughs> you know, right. That's not um, the right rate right exchange. <laughs> Yeah, when you go behind the scenes, as I can as the author, uh, I can see clearly that it says the 21 and change, but somehow out to the public, it says $38 and change. Wow, that's weird. But um, yes, at the moment, it's available in paperback. And on Monday, I'm going to put it up as an email, or I'm uh, sorry, an ebook. And uh, as soon as that takes, which may be right away or it may be a few days, uh, I've got it done as an audio book, and uh, I will get that onto Audible. Audible won't take it unless it's already an ebook. And uh, wow. Audible has an arrangement with Amazon where if you go to Amazon, and you can see this in my other books, that it's available as a paperback, as an ebook, and as an audio book. Um, now, what other books have you written? Well, I wrote one on handwriting analysis initially, and uh, it uh, did quite well. It sold over 13,000 copies, and uh, it's in its third edition. So that's a fun book, and it continues to sell. Then I wrote one on metaphysics, and um, I didn't know much really about uh, spirituality, but uh, I wrote the thing anyway, thinking I did. Uh, <laughs> one I like much better is uh, the one on spirituality called Spirituality, uh, Understanding It and Pursuing It. Uh, then after five individuals started channeling with me, I just said, wow, this is incredible. And uh, so I wrote a book then <laughs> and uh, it uh, chronicled the adventures of the first five, as well as a number of spiritual concepts uh, that book is just about out of print, and I'm not going to print anymore, really. It will be available on Amazon, but um, this one, I guess, you know, as you grow and develop yourself and you put your latest and best thinking into a book, uh, this one is really good in that uh, a lot of it is the stuff of the beings. It's not my stuff. You know, I, I make comments here and there, but, uh, you know, th this is from above. Right, right. Yeah. That's, um, it's funny to say, or hear you say, well, you know, I'm not really a writer, I'm an author, because I'm just like getting this information and giving it out. So maybe, maybe you missed your calling as a newscaster. <laughs> <laughs> no, perhaps. All right. You have, you have a lot of books that you've written for not being a not, you know, not being a writer. <laughs> Yeah, it is ironic, um, but really, uh, you know, any profession, you know, yeah. they work at it. You know, I don't right. work at it at all. Um, I, I write a lot of emails and, uh, you know, I guess I, I do write a lot just uh, with the people I'm engaged with. But, uh, yeah, uh, I think the first book I wrote actually was um, a manual for how you could put together a partnership between a high school and a business. And uh, I did 11 of them. And so I wrote a book about it <laughs> and how to do it. And uh, one of the school boards uh, has taken it over. But uh, 
that was, I guess, my introduction to writing. Ah. <laughs> And then I've noticed in your dedication that you've got um, many that assist you with the review of the book, helping with, you know, that editing along the way, the final mm -hmm. editing. And, you know, and then and then that's a process in and of itself, just, you know, making sure that you've gone through the information. Does it read OK? You know, is my is the message that I'm trying to get across? Is it coming across? So how long was that process? Well, I started to do this as a book uh, probably in the early summer, and I've taken longer with this than I have with any book. Um, all of them up to that point have been done in under 90 days, but it's usually because the information is rattling around in my head, and all I have to do is throw it down. Yeah. Um, to me, um, books are sort of a three-pronged process. The, First, you write the book. Secondly, you publish the book. And thirdly, you sell the book. Yeah. The selling to me is the hardest. But there's a fair bit to publishing. You know, the formatting, the graphic art, getting it to the right size, getting the spine the right thickness given the number of pages and uh, all of that sort of thing. You know, the right... Um, Cool. Maybe mm -hmm. little lines and where you start new chapters and things like that have all got to be thought out. Uh, and this last book, I uh, hired somebody to do that. Previously, I did it myself, and I thought eh, it's a lot of work. Yeah, I mean, it looks like a lot of work. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, you think about it. Um, you know, the size of the font, the style of the font. It's a serif font. You can see certain titles uh, start only on the right page. Smaller ones start on any page, but they do start at the top of the page. Uh, my right. name is at the top on the right, the uh, channeling connections on the left. Um, but the major titles don't have anything at the top. Um, there's bold print in certain places. There's italics in certain places. And there's got to be consistency with those things. So the uh, formatting of the book and the publishing of it um, is a bit of an exercise, but that's the easiest of the three, I think. Yeah. So it's pretty tricky. Um, well, you've got this, this lovely introduction and, you know, a lot of us listen to, you know, Kevin Moore and he's the host of They Call Us Chattelers. Mm -hmm. So if you um, allow me, or give me permission to go ahead and read that forward. I'd be honored to be able to do that. Please. And hopefully um, on behalf of Kevin, <laughs> I don't misread his words. <laughs> you don't have that uh, lady killer English accent. <laughs> <laughs> but he says, um, it is a privilege for me to pen the foreword to Peter Dennis's book on the channeling connection. Having interviewed over 150 channelers myself, this book takes the reader on a journey by clearly defining what channeling is and helping the reader develop and deepen their own channeling abilities. Through the process of channeling, we can draw energy from the psychic realm into our physical reality. Humanity is slowly awakening to the idea that we are a soul having a human experience. We are part of something much greater. Since as long as anyone can remember, channeling has existed. Channeling allows spiritual entities to connect to us and permit their feelings, ideas, and wisdom to pass through us and communicate them to others. Numerous channeling techniques exist through poetry, art, story, storytelling, music, painting, and more. Another kind of channeling is contacting the spirit world to obtain spiritual readings and knowledge. Another is using light language for healing. May this book bless you and guide you on your journey of communicating with spirit and helping yourself and others. Blessings to all. Signed, Kevin Moore. Of course, he didn't say signed. I just said signed. <laughs> <laughs> and again, he's the host of They Call Us Channelers and The Moore Show. So, you know, I feel like that that really says it all. That that encapsulates channelers. <laughs> it does. Yeah, and he's a very knowledgeable guy. And uh, in a sense, he's uh, had some of the same adventure I have. He's not channeling himself, but he's uh, hanging around channelers a lot. A lot. <laughs> and, and, and learning a great deal at the time. Yeah. Now, now, as we're we're reaching the, you know, the, uh, well, in my time zone, the eleven thirty hour. 
So we've still got about a half an hour left. I know some people have asked about, you know, would we do maybe a guided meditation or, you know, something along the lines to connect into, you know, the upcoming, um, you know, the, the current energies, the, e what is it? The equinox? Mm -hmm. Yes. Partial equinox. Uh, partial. partial. Yeah, it's an eclipse, right? An eclipse that it doesn't it totally. The 28th. Isn't that coming up on the 28th? I believe it's today. Okay. Yep. The solar eclipse. So I don't know if you're open to that, um, but what I'd like to do is um, maybe do like a mini guided meditation, just take a minute to connect and, um, and then, and then we can, you know, wrap everything up. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but, but prior to doing that, I do want to thank you for your time, your wonderful information. I really encourage, you know, everyone to pick up a copy of the book. And um, showing it one more time. How many times can I show the book? <laughs> yeah, Wendy, thank you very much for uh, first of all having me on the, the show again, and uh, secondly for the the enthusiastic way you've plugged this book. <laughs> uh, I would say to your listeners, if you do buy the book and if you like it, it would really help sales if you were to do a review uh, on Amazon. So, oh yeah, definitely. So, definitely. I'll, I'll add, you. I'll add that there for you as well. Be my pleasure. And of course, anybody else, if you do get the book and, and read it, um, I encourage you to do the same because, you know, we're a media of, uh, our social media is all about, you know, the pings and the pangs, <laughs> the subscribing. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you very much, Wendy. Uh, yeah. You, uh, uh, I of really course. appreciate it. All right, so focusing on solar eclipse energy. Is there is there anything that you want to add in for solar eclipse? Well, this one is a partial one apparently in that it uh, uh, the moon is in a position that it's not going to completely cover the sun. It's going to be in the middle of it such that you see a ring of light around it. So it's referred to somewhat as a ring of fire. And it, but it is a ring. Now, still, I, I, even as a ring, it's dangerous to look directly at it. And sunglasses will not provide the protection you need. And don't mess around with telescopes or anything because that'll right? fall your eyes very quickly. Um, I think there are particular protective devices you can get. Maybe you can. I you can actually get those it. paper, the solar eclipse glasses. They don't cost very much. Mm -hmm. And you can get like six of them in a pack. So you and your whole family can can do that. I know I've done that when we were having a big solar eclipse several years back and I was working in the city of Chicago. But um, but yeah, excellent recommendations. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So, um, so as we're reaching that half hour, I think what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and... Um, ask everybody to just kind of, uh, you know, take a deep breath and we're just gonna calm ourselves and center ourselves. So just going ahead and, you know, I like to encourage all of you to close your eyes, take in a nice deep breath, breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth and do that now. Feeling yourself relaxing, finding your presence and peace in your heart core. And then taking in a second deep breath, bringing that into your mind space, asking your mind to be quiet, to relax and find peace, breathing that out. And another breath and feel this energy going into your entirety of your body. Connecting in with the energies around you that abound. Asking Archangel Michael to put his loving protection around us, feeling yourself covered in with his blue light, his cloak surrounding you while you do your work. And I thank Archangel Michael for coming in and doing that for us. I do work with him whenever I do work. Now imagine yourself being surrounded with white light. 
Imagine roots coming out the bottom of your feet and connecting in with Mother Gaia grounding you. Imagine that your arms are heavier and heavier as you sink into the oneness of who you are as a being. Feeling the heart beating within your body, tune into that innate presence that you are already connected to. There's nothing you have to do to beat your heart. You don't have to tell your heart, start beating now. Make sure you continue beating for every minute. It's innate. That's the part of you I want you to connect with. And although you can hold your breath for a few moments, maybe even minutes, you still need that divine air to come into your body, into your body. So as you're feeling that air come into your lungs, connecting in more deeply with yourself, know that you are also connected into the universe. And part of that universe is our sun. And part of that universe are our stars and planets. So taking a moment to just float with your mind's eye, lifting up and out into the universe connecting in with the stars and the greatest, brightest star in our sky, the sun. And although we think sometimes of the eclipse as the potential for our shadow selves, there's still that fire that even though covered, partial or whole, is always there. So if you find yourself going through something that some would call shadow work, having to release heavy, dark energies, things that no longer resonate with you, I'd like you to go ahead and pull on that ring of fire that Dennis mentioned. Seeing the brightness of that ring using it to transmute, using it to alchemize those shadows, those dense energies, feeling it connect in through your cellular structure, through your auric field, your causal, your mental bodies, those seven layers that surround you physically that are etheric within the etheric realm. Just taking another deep breath and breathe that out. Feeling into the energy of this fire, transmuting and clearing anything in the present, any limiting beliefs keeping you from that next highest and greatest bliss that you find your heart wants to be in. And remember to speak to the heart, to connect to the heart, to find peace in the heart, letting go of all those things that no longer serve you. Bringing in now through your light tube, your pranic energy, streaming it down through that tube that surrounds you from above and down below into the earth, where Mama Gaia will help transmute and change that into love if the energy moves down, and source will change that into love if the energy goes up. 
allowing it to move out of your body for anything you may physically be holding on to, out of your arc field for anything that may be swimming around in your energetic field. Taking a deep breath in through the nose, holding it in the heart space for three, two, one, and release. Now, knowing that your tube of light can connect into those energies of the fiery ring. And just imagine that golden ring of fire coming down through that light tube, charging and recharging you for any ascension symptoms that you may have been experiencing, creating a vibration and vibrancy within your being, letting that sink in through the top of your head, through your third eye, your throat chakras, your high heart and heart, your solar plexus and sacral and root, and down through your earth star. Connecting in with Gaia, sending her love. And then bringing that energy back up through the tube, up through your feet, your shins and calves, your knees, your thighs, your hips, your torso, up and down your arms to your fingertips, up through the top of your head and out into the etheric realm. Taking in a gentle breath, calmness, thanking the energy of the solar eclipse for working with us today, thanking your angels and guides, spirit team, for their assistance, bringing you back to a gentle awareness, a gentle peace, moving your fingers and toes. And when you open your eyes, you will be awake and wake and feeling good and ready to conquer the world. <laughs> ah, nice, Wendy. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you for participating. Mm -hmm. And um, I do want to thank everybody who's joined us on YouTube, for everybody who continues to be a part of this group, for everyone who's joined, who's currently on with our group here today. And it's just been my pleasure to host you to have worked with you and to have gotten to know you over this last year, um, probably just under a year, but nonetheless, uh, it's been it's been just wonderful. And I encourage anybody who is interested in in um, in working with Peter and you know to reaching out, checking out his website. And go ahead and give your website again. It's yeah, just your name, right? Just PeterHDennis.com. Wonderful. Two ends. Well, I thank you again. I'll just take one last quick look to see if I have any messages that came up in the chat or if anybody wants to come on with a final, um, a final remark. Um, Susan, yes, did I, you have anything? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I was going to mention uh, Swazi from the YouTube chat was asking about a meditation for channeling, I think maybe to like activate help activate yourself with your channeling abilities. And I'm just wondering if we wanted to do uh, some light language as like uh, with the intention of helping to activate channeling ability. That's I would just say to help them connect into their own self so that they can find out if that's something they want to do. I'm happy to do that. Um, Peter, if that's something that you're okay with, we'd- Oh, absolutely, yes. Be happy to- Definitely. Do you have anything else to add before we do our light language? Or we'll just call it a light language blessing and uh, uh, or, activation yeah, for connecting a in heart with your activation. Self. Yeah. yeah, like for whatever each individual needs. Yeah. Okay, we'll do that. <laughs> As our, our 15 minute close. <laughs>
Okay, I've got Arcturians. Ata hui na ra ka hira ta iti kriya ra ta tuhi na mara ka iti kriya na ta ti iti juana ra ka hira pa hia na maui ka hia na na ata kunya ra ta ipa hui ra ta niutu utu ina hia pa i na ka hui na na ra ta amahi na na ha ka hia na na atu hui na ma ata hia na ha i kata tuhi ra ta iti tuhi na mara. We are the Arcturians and we send you these energies with the blessing, assisting you for what is needed currently, just as requested for your highest good. If you are moving toward channeling, this will assist. If you are moving toward other energetic work, it also will assist our blessings to you. And thank you for allowing us to connect in this moment. Thank you for doing this. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Would you like me to share one? Okay. To a si a kia si koto a ya si kahiti u koti ya ya si kia huku he a zia yutku open your hearts to all that you are. Si a yi kutu ya si a kutu ya tite a ya kia kutu a ya he a zia tuku for you are much greater than you think you are in your limited perception. Expand your light outwards in all directions. To encompass your world and all in it. Continue to open your mind to all your galactic connections for your family families are with you see i go to he has a key yeah yeah to go to yeah for your core he has a key yeah he can't continue to inquire and discover see guy id he has a key here to go he has seen more about your self-definition see i like you to go to your titty are you cool has he can yet here 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 to go enjoy your journey here see guy at all he has a year to go to go i see it go yet here he has a year and try not to take it so seriously so it's all about your experience and what you wish to create. Yeah, that was the Galactic Dragon Collective, but I think the baby dragon. I heard the baby dragon. The baby dragon stepped in towards the end about. <laughs> you know, enjoying your experience, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, beautiful. I don't know if yeah. Joan or Radha have any light language they'd like to share or that are also here in the room with us. Oh, Joan, Joan is saying she can do a blessing. Thank you, Joan. Okay. Thank you. I can ask any he's giddy head a halakuru who no could get any key. He see can I have a school, Lana can I have a Haniki school, and Natana Aniki to Una take it cannot scar and naked it in the tutu to go a husky. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you. Now I know you get those translations. Are you sure you're signing up before you give us that translation? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. What are they saying? <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I just say, be love. <laughs> be love. It is, and I think that's a lovely way to to uh, to end our. Uh, to end our uh, conversation today. Peter, I thank you again for being here. I thank you for the time that you've taken and uh, would appreciate um, if anybody has any questions to go visit his, uh, his website, reach out, purchase his book, final plug. Ah! <laughs> I'm not 
excited to be able to show that because honestly, it like literally arrived yesterday. So it couldn't, the synchronicity of it, you know, showing up for me was more perfect. Could it not have been more perfect. So um, any last thoughts you'd like to share with us before I go ahead and go off live? Uh, just one of gratitude, Wendy. Um, yeah, it, it's really um, kind of unique to be interviewed by someone who knows as much as you do about the subject. <laughs> <laughs> maybe more <laughs> um, and certainly more from a first-hand standpoint so um, yeah it was um, much more of a conversation than a, an interview I would think and uh, yeah I thoroughly enjoyed it and I thank you very much for it thank you and, and thank you for allowing me to do that quick meditation as our viewers were you know asking to connect and I, I hope you were able to enjoy that as well <laughs> All right. Well, have a wonderful uh, rest of whatever, you know, whatever time zone you're in, whether it's morning, noon or night. And uh, thank you for joining us. And, you know, please feel free to check out hookalo.org. And goodbye. Goodbye, Wendy. Many thanks. <laughs>